All right, so um, we talked about um, um, inheritance. We talked about uh, um, virtual functions. We talked about abstract based classes. So uh, uh, before we begin, we, we do with the standard uh, any questions about anything before we begin. Any questions? The quiz that you are doing, it has to be done on a Seneca computer. You cannot do it on your own notebook. If you do it on your own notebook, I will see the IP number is not the IP number of this classroom, and it's considered cheating. So it has to be. It's not now. Don't worry. It's 2.45. But make sure you log in to thing and make it ready to log in to my Seneca on a local computer. Make sure everything is ready so when we start, you have time to do it but you cannot do it on your own computer. Um, while the, while the, uh, while the, uh, test is, while, while the quiz is going on, um, I will um, have all your computers mirrors on my computer, mirrored on my computer. So, you know this, you've done, your, your, prof, your prof done it, showed it to you, right? You know that, right? So anything you do on your machines may be recorded over there or I may be watching. So anything, nothing you do while you're doing the test is private. I have full access to your computer. I can shut it down. I can pause it. I can stop it. I can uh, stop your access. If I see at any moment a flag comes up that anything other than your browser is open, you uh, immediately I'll, blo I'll close it down and it's plagiarism. These are things that I need to, to tell, let you know because then you're going to say, oh, I just opened the notepad to do something and then again. And I cannot get over that mouse. Anyways, <laughs> all right, so, so that's that. Uh, um, I give you a couple of minutes. Think on what uh, questions you might have. Uh, if you do not have any questions, I'll do a quick overview of what we have talked about last time. It's going to help you with your quiz too. So the quiz is on week six. And by mistake, I'll put it yesterday. Everybody got a zero, right? <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll reset it and I'm going to um, restart it today. But the quiz, as I mentioned, it's going to be on week six and eight. Uh, so classes with resources around 20% of the mark and 80% uh, of the mark is on inheritance. I'm not having, I am not, I did not add any questions about virtuality. That comes in the next one. So the virtual stuff is going to be on the next, uh, uh, on the next test. Uh, at the same time, actually I'll do it when the, when the time comes. So, uh, let me see what else. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to add the projects over here one by one. I will talk about it. A uh, quick review on uh, what we have talked about. Were you just stretching or you had a question? Question? Okay. No. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to pause the recording if it doesn't make sense. We use the animal class as, a, as an example to show you what inheritance is. But before doing that, we talked about global, global entities, global objects, and global variables. And we said global variables don't just simply exist. You cannot create a global variable. The most global thing you can actually create is a file scope variable. So that's as global as, as it can go just by itself. If you want to make something truly global, first you have to create the variable or the objects that you want to make it global as a file scope and then make that variable visible through a header file, through the extern, uh, command to actually make it global. We said that how we make something global, first we create the well, first we create the variable we want to make it global. We initialize it to whatever you to want. Then we copy the 
signature of the variable, which means the type and the name, not the initialization, and we put it in a relative header file and add an extern at the beginning. That extern says there is an external Boolean variable called debug in a file, get it from there and makes it available. We made that thing, what happened? Of course I can. People at the end that do not have binoculars, uh, <laughs> can you, is it good back there? You're good? You're good? Okay. So yeah, so external bool debug, so that makes the debug actually uh, uh, an external variable, which essentially means global variable. Now the extern can be used for objects too, and that's what I did with my utils thing over there. So the utils, all my utility files are in a class, and I, and I made that class, uh, 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 I instantiated that, that class into a variable called ut, and I made that ut variable external, and therefore everywhere I have access to my utility variables. So that's what we did, and that was our um, animal thingy, and we said animal has a name. Uh, we can set or get the name using uh, an accessor and a modifier and or query in a um, uh, modifier. And uh, uh, we had a constructor, uh, an animal could act, move and make a sound, and we had a destructor to show when the object's gonna die. Then we talked about inheritance. We said to actually create inheritance and build something out of an already existing class, the syntax for it would be to say the base, uh, the, the derived class, is a base class. So public is essentially is a. So when we write public over there, we are actually saying, I want this, ca this class to inherit everything from the other class. So if I don't mention anything, just that, and leave an empty class, class, cat, animal, open curly bracket, close curly bracket, and don't write anything, that's as if I have uh, uh, just renamed the class. <laughs> I didn't do anything, it just, it's just inherited. But you can always add attributes to it. You can uh, 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 modify, uh, you, can change the, uh, you can change the methods of the, of the base class by shadowing the methods in the derived class. What is shadowing? What happens? So when you have a, base, a derived class having the exact same method as the base class, we say that the derived class's method shadows the base class's method. So essentially any method that overrides shadows that, which means if you have a derived class, if you have a derived object and you call that function, it will not see the base class's function and run the derived class's function. Obviously, you might choose not to change some of the methods of the base class, in this case move, which means you can still call move for a cat, but it's going to move like an animal because no change was made. We can modify the functions that we have by actually shadowing them, but inside the shadowing function, we call the base class, base class's function. So essentially, in the sound of cat, I first do whatever I want to do, or the other way, it doesn't make any difference. Then I call the base class's function, okay? So you can manually force the compiler to call the base class's function by uh, 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 name of the base class and scope resolution. Remember, this is not an object. You cannot use the dot. You have to do scope resolution because that sound is part of cat. It only belongs to animal part of cat. Again, a derived class is not two classes. It is one class with two parts. And one part of it is coming from another class. Remember that. We said this is beautiful, we do something like this. Uh, we can essentially improve a, a, an already existing class and add features to it. Or, in other words, 
what we have done in C language. In C language, we reused code by creating functions and call the functions over and over instead of rewriting logic, correct? In object-oriented, in object-oriented, uh, in object orientation, we go one step further. We say uh, reusing function is an obvious thing. Obviously, everybody does, does that. We not only reuse function, we reuse design, which means when something is designed, I take the entire design and then add more capabilities to it. That's how we reuse uh, code. Reusing code in an object orientation happens through inheritance. Reusing in structured language happens through modules and functions. Are we clear on that? So how does object oriented languages, how do object oriented languages reuse code? By inheritance. They inherit old designs. Are we good? If you think I'm go saying gobbledygook, stop me. All these things are fine and dandy, and it's beautiful to work with. There is one slight problem with it. That problem is that, unlike what we have in real life, in an object-oriented language, if you refer to a derived class using its family name, if you refer to a, a derived class using its base name or using its base pointer, if you do that, then it will forget that it's a derived class and it will act like a base class. So, and that causes trouble. So anything that it used to do, it completely forgets. If you have a cat in a pointer of an animal or in a reference an animal, it's no more a cat. It will act like an animal. Maybe that's desirable, but sometimes you need to allocate things dynamically. So if such a thing happens, and the dynamic allocation happens on the derived class with no reference of a derived class, and only with a pointer of a base class, then we are in trouble. If we actually create a dynamic instance of the derived class, keeping it in the pointer of the base class, then there is absolutely no way to delete the whole thing because the compiler is not aware that the delete is happening to a cat. It thinks it's an, an animal. It removes the animal and all the extra stuff for the cat remains in memory, which is very bad. When we found that out, we said that there is a mechanism in with which, in an object-oriented design, you can force the compiler to always look for a newer version of a method in a hierarchy of inheritance. If that, is, if that method is, is, uh, exists, it calls that one instead. And we call that mechanism virtualism. So the virtuality in, virtuality in an object-oriented system guarantees that the latest version of a function is called. From that, we understood anything that we want to make sure when it's improved, the latest version is called, we tag as virtual. That's the only thing we need to do. There are a few things about virtual that we need to remember. Virtuality does not come in action, and it, it's completely dormant and without any effect if you, have, if you don't have inheritance. So if you have an animal in a pointer of an animal, if you have animal with the reference of an animal, if you have a cat with the reference of a cat, if you have a cat with a pointer of a cat, there is no inheritance. There is no virtuality. Everything is pointing to what they are. So nothing, so virtuality don't do anything. Virtuality only comes in effect when you call a derived class using its family name, using its base name, or its base pointer. If that happens, then always the latest version of the method is called. Because of this fact, to make sure that no memory leak happens because of inheritance, we set the standard for uh, destructors to a new thing. First of all, any class you create must have a destructor. You cannot have a class without a destructor. That's number one. Number two, that destructor which if you don't need it, you just make it an empty body destructor. That's it. But 
that destructor must be virtual. So first, if you need a, virtu a destructor for a, for a class, fine, you have to make it virtual. If you do not need a destructor for a class, you still have to create an empty destructor and make it virtual. This guarantees in case of inheritance, memory leak is not a possibility. Are we okay down to this point? Yes. No? Of course, of course, of course, of course. So virtuality guarantees that the latest version of something is called, correct? Okay. When you make a destructor virtual, it guarantees that latest version of the destructor is called, correct? So if you have a derived class and the derived class is pointing, is being pointed by a base class, as we said before, oh, that's not the one, like this, if that is the case, then deleting the animal pointer in this case will do us no good if it's not virtual. When you delete it, delete invokes the destructor. And if the destructor is virtual, it calls the last destructor. And the last destructor is for, for the most derived object. And the most derived object contains all its uh, predecessors, which means if you delete an animal, if you delete a cat, the animal inside will die too, and therefore, no memory leak. So, rem remember this, from now on, if you are creating a destructor, make it virtual. If you are not creating a destructor, create it anyway, but make it empty and put a virtual in front of it. Just to make sure that if this thing happens, no memory leak actually comes to play. So, this was very good and nice when the functions are obvious and we know exactly what needs to be done. So we have, we have some actions and these actions are to be taken and they need to get improved in future. Therefore, we make them virtual. We create functions, we make them virtual. The virtual functions guarantee that the latest version is called life is beautiful. But sometimes in reality, Who's this backpack? Yours? Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure nobody <laughs> left it from the other class. Anyways, so, again, when you know what a function is supposed to do, you're fine. Sometimes this happens that you know that some function exists. You know some action needs to be done, but you still don't know how. We, as an example, we talked about humans being able to talk or uh, animals making a sound. If I, you know that every animal makes a sound somehow, but you don't know what the sound is. So you're going to say, okay, I don't know how it's going to make a sound, but I need to make sure that if, if, if an animal exists, it needs to make a sound. So what do I do? I'm going to say, I'm going to make the sound method of the animal virtual, but not only virtual, I make it incomplete. So I will say the function must exist in future. The function must exist in future by assigning it to a zero. So you're saying virtual, in this case that we have over here, we are saying, we are saying, Virtual sound, virtual void sound equal to zero. That means an animal must make a sound. I don't know how yet. That renders animal an abstract class. It becomes an abstract. It's not a concrete class anymore. You cannot instantiate it. It's only an idea. If you want the class to be instantiated, you need to Inherit it to something that you know what the sound is. I'm going to inherit it to a cat. Cat says meow, so that's fine. I can do that. You inherit it to a dog. Dog says woof. Fine, you can do it. You inherit it to a bird. Wait a minute. I can't because bird still has so many different species and each one make a different sound. So if you do so, if you create a class out of animal, say bird, that has features like flying, because a bird can fly. If that's the case, 
but you still don't know how the sound is implemented, you just don't implement the sound. Bird becomes abstract too. So although bird has inherited from the animal, but because it did not implement the pure virtual function, it remains abstract. Then you go from bird to, I don't know, a baji, and you go, ah, and that's going to be the sound. Okay? Whatever. I don't know. So what I'm saying is that uh, not necessarily you do the inheritance, and in hand, inheritance makes the class concrete. Sometimes you do the inheritance and make the object a new object, but still that thing is not uh, concrete. As um, I was mentioning, like I had two students in the other class, uh, both from China. One spoke Mandarin, the other one spoke Cantonese. So I said, we have human being, we have Chinese human being, but still Chinese human beings talk cannot be implemented. I need to know if this is a Cantonese speaking Chinese or a Mandarin speaking Chinese. So as you see, you can still come to talking. You create a, a Chinese human being from human. You create a Persian human being from human, but you don't know if it's speak Azerbaijanian, Kurdish, Farsi, I don't know, so many different languages that I don't know. And same thing in, in, in China, I have hundreds of languages. I don't want to even start with India because I know there are like 2,000 languages over there. So, so, so stuff like that. So again, all these things are very, very complicated. And this virtuality and pure virtuality tries to give you a solution to actually be able to have a proper design in object orientation. And that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, was the end of what we talked about last time. Questions? <laughs> that was like, uh, as soon as I said, uh, no question, he said, <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was a good one or a bad one. But anyway, so uh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, any questions? Yes. Okay, so uh, the, co the constructors are called the way you invoke them. It, 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 it is always, uh, and to just remind yourself how it's actually, they, they are called. And it, you can, the order is always from bottom to top. If you are building a three-story building. First, you have to first make the first story, then the second and the third, right? It's the exact same thing. If I'm making a cat, I have to have an animal and a cat on it, right? So when it's getting created, always the constructor of animal gets created and then cat. You can decide which one by manually invoking. So you're saying when the default constructor of cat is called, call that constructor of animal. You can do that. But nevertheless, always the constructor of the base classes run first. So if, so if, I've, if I have base, derive one and derive two, when I instantiate drive two, first base is called drive one and then derive two. That, and the initialization happens in this order. Initialization happens, uh, starts from inline initialization. So when you are initializing, when you are initializing a class, I don't have anything in here. Okay, so if I have something like this over here, and I have, yeah, this is actually a good one. So I have one initialization over here. So let me just put it like that. The initialization, first the inline initialization happen. After that, the initialization area will happen. And then, the constructor starts running. What happens inside the constructor? Constructor is not initialization anymore. When the construction's body starts to run, it means now the object is, exists. All its stuff are built. And now I'm setting it. So in a constructor, you do not initialize the object. You are setting the object to values. Again, please appreciate the difference between these two statements. Please appreciate the difference between these two statements. It seems like they are both initialized to set to 5. That's not the case. 
for line four and five, I is first created with garbage in it, then that garbage is overwritten by five. It, in line six, J is created with five in it. So essentially, a five gets created and it's called J. It is there at no moment of time J has garbage in it. Same thing over here with stages of initialization. So when you initialize a cat, either in here, so let's say number of lives, number of lives will have at no time will have garbage in it. It will first have this, and so this is the first stage, and then this is the second stage. But in both cases, if you have this value, if you have this value, then it's going to get initialized over there. If you have it over here, it's going to get still considered an initialization. As soon as the function starts inside the body of the constructor, everything the class has is built and done. And it, you're just setting. So one of the most common mistakes like this shows how important it is to understand that. So if I do this, why is it giving me an error? Oh, because animal is an abstract class. Actually, that's a good example for it to understand. So that's actually a beautiful error message. I'll tell you exactly what, what it means and why. So people sometimes think they can call the constructor of the base class and set the base class to something. That's not what happens. If you do something like this, the cat will get created with a default animal. So animal will get defaulted. After it's created, at line six, a temporary nameless animal will get created and then die right there. And because animal is an abstract based class, this will even give you an error because it says I cannot create an animal. Okay, so remember, you cannot call a constructor. Cre calling a constructor is creating a temporary nameless object. You can't do that. And that's what I have to say about that. Questions? Yes. You cannot create, there is no virtual constructor. Constructors cannot be virtual. Virtual, virtuality is only for functions. Functions and destructor. Constructors cannot. It just doesn't, doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay, constructors cannot be virtual. Only destructor and methods. Are we good? Yes. Passing arguments to a base class. We just did that. Line six. We just did that, line six. I'm passing the argument, the name, to the constructor of the animal. So what, what about it? You're not calling it, you're invoking it. Invoking, invoke, okay. We need to understand what is the difference between calling and invoking. Calling means you are literally manually calling it yourself. To invoke, although it means calling, but we mean that we request that what we ask for to be called automatically, to be used automatically for initialization. And because it's in an initialization area, that's not calling, that's initializing. Okay? It's exactly the difference between integer i equals yada yada that I wrote. Okay?
Anything else? Any question one? Any question two? All right. So that was the review of the whole thing that we have done. And the next day you are coming in, we're going to tell you that C++, uh, as we mentioned, uh, calls any class that has at least one pure virtual method an abstract base class. And that's the definition for it. But in object orientation, abstract base classes have two different, there are two different abstract base classes. We have abstract base classes and we have interfaces. With C++, interface doesn't mean anything. It's just an abstract class. But what is an interface? An interface is a class that only has pure virtual methods and nothing else. A class that is filled with pure virtual methods. No method is implemented. They call that uh, an interface. Yes. No, not at all. If you have a virtual function, if you have a virtual function in a class, that is not pure virtual function. If you have a virtual function in a class, you can choose to call it or not. If you don't call it, then the parent's virtual class will be called. But its, but it's virtuality is not being used because there is no latest version. Yes. Animal, bird, and pigeon. So, so animal has a sound, animal has a virtual, bird has, let's say, you don't implement the virtual move in the bird, but you implement it in a pigeon. If that's the case, it's still, uh, if you have a pigeon, then the latest version will be pigeon. If you have a bird, then there is no latest method. It's going to call the animals. Okay? Again, literally. Virtuality guarantees that the latest version of a method will be called. Now, that latest method may exist or not. Anything else? Any question one? Any question two? Yes. Yeah, so you have a function called jump. So you have, uh, I have class A, B, C, and B in the middle does not implement what we have in A, but C does. It does, okay? Yes, of course. So if you go halfway through, it's still inherited. So what I mean is that, what I mean is that, If I have if I have series of inherited objects as follows, so I have this one and this one and this one, okay, and they all have a function called whoa, that's too big. Uh, they all have a function called. Wow. Okay. So they have a function called foo. And this one has a has a function called foo. And this one has a function called foo. Okay? So if and this is class A this is class A. This is class A. This is class B. And this is class C. So if you call, so 
what happens is that, and let's say foo is virtual. Let's say foo is virtual. If you have an instance of C pointed by an A, you call foo, foo of C is called. If you have an instance of C pointed by pointer of B, foo is called, C is called. No matter where in the hierarchy of inheritance you are, you call that one, that one is called. Not only that, even if you do not have this, so let's say there is Let's say there is no, I don't know, how can I cannot wipe it off. Let's say there is no foo in here. Okay? Let's say there is no foo in here. If you have an object of type C pointed by a pointer of type B and you say B.foo, C will be called. Even if B doesn't have a foo, is foo because Foo comes from A. In any case, the latest version is called, no matter what. That's why I use the word guarantee. No matter how it is, how many of them are missing the function foo, it doesn't matter. Always the latest one is called, whichever is the latest. Now if I have D, E, F, some of them have foo, some of them don't, depending on which one is the latest and what is your object, that's going to get called. Only if the object is pointed or referred to by a parent, if a, B, if a C is called with a C a method, then obviously C is going to call. If an object of type B is called with a B reference, obviously A is going to get called because there is no C. So only when you have a child pointed or referred to by parent or grandparent, that's when virtuality comes to play. Other than that, they don't even work. They don't exist. There is no latest version. Okay? Any other question? You identify you in different arguments? Okay. Overriding is only when the signatures are identical. Don't go into overloading. Overloading are different functions. So what I mean is that if I have this, if I have this in here, this has nothing to do with the other foos. That's not an override. Using? What are you talking about? That's why you have display, and then you need to put using person dot display. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. So that means what means you want to say at any moment when I'm calling display, use the display of the parent. It's you're lazy to write. I would never do that. That for me, that's hidden logic. That's why I don't teach it. See, anything that hides logic, I hate. Because you write it, you forget, then you call the display, and you keep saying, what the heck? Why the display of parent is being called? I don't like that. I don't use it. I never touch it. And I have never used it in 30 years, and I just did fine. <laughs> just, so what she was talking about is, what, what, what she was saying is that, what does it mean if I say using uh, foo in... Uh, full uh, A scope resolution uh, in C. It means whenever in C I'm calling full, call the parents, not the this one. I don't like that. If I want the parent to be called, it, I'm just going to write it with the scope to, to know which one I'm which one I'm calling. And just letting you know, I have no question about that because I don't like it. I don't have a question about it. Um, one thing you have to realize, and I want you to, and I want you to uh, uh, 
Uh, be aware of it as you are going through. Uh, a language has many, many, many different capabilities, okay? And many of them need to get ignored because they are not, they are just there because other languages had it. Like, you know that C++ has a keyword called go to. Are you know even this go to? Huh? Yeah, in C. So it's a go to. Like, you can literally go to another piece of code and run it. Like dinosaurs time. Nobody uses it. Same thing as continue or break. You shouldn't use them. They are not, they are, they are ancient stuff that are never used. That's structured abandon. So structured programming abandon that. Now, for example, in inheritance, when you are inheriting something, again, this is too rich for our blood. I do not want to, I do not want you to, like, just uh, listen and ignore. That's what I'm saying, okay? So uh, in here, for example, when you look at the, the dog over here, I'm saying class dog, public animal, okay? That public between dog and animal can be private, can be protected. That can be private or protected. I can say dog, private animal. Dog, protected animal. I hear people talking, I'm going to kill myself. Okay, please don't. Please don't talk, that's disrespectful. Okay, if you have a question, talk to me. So that public thingy between dog and animal, that can be private or protected. It means something, okay? I'm not going to explain to you what it means because it's, again, too rich for our blood. But just to know, if you see dog protected animal, many books and people and experienced programmers say you should never do that because it is wrong to have a protected inheritance. So many features exist in a language that you should not use. So you see questions like uh, Milady asked over there, I, uh, um, I say that I don't like it because of this and that and that. So just be aware of it. So it's not that, it's, it's very common that certain stuff of a language should be ignored because they're just bringing, they just bring chaos. And w another suggestion, never leave anything for default. Never leave anything for, for default. So anything you say, if you do it like that, by default, this is going to happen. Don't do it. Manually do the default. Because defaults change. And that's when you're going to be in trouble. Not in 10 years, but in 20 years. Okay? Defaults change. No, what I mean is that they say, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. If you don't set a variable, if you don't initialize a variable, by default it will be zero. No, in Linux it will, but not in Windows. Don't leave stuff for default. Defaults are different in different platforms, different scenarios. When you, they tell you something by default is that, if you are not, if you are not sure, I wouldn't even say not sure, do the default manually yourself. Set that thing to zero. Don't say, it's going to be zero. I'm not going to write equal to zero. Don't do that. You're going to pay for it dearly later. Okay? Don't leave stuff for default. Do the default yourself to make sure that this is a default. I've been hurt so many much on that that I'm not doing it anymore. Okay? Keep that in mind. All right. I think we're done. Any questions? Any more questions? Before we start the quiz? Okay, computers ready, people. <laughs>